Well, we had a number of pilots, just over 20 pilots. Uh, those have all now concluded. Uh, the results have been uh, analysed and a final report uh, on these pilots is due to go to the Beak Trimming Action Group uh, later this month in November. Uh, they're going to consider it and then make a recommendation to government. So I know it's been a long drawn out process. These have been very thorough uh, trials, but the industry doesn't have much longer to wait before we announce our uh, conclusions and next steps. Well, what I'd say is there were uh, around 20 pilots. Um, we did have a problem with one of them where actually the, the, the flock in the end had to be emergency beak trimmed and, and depopulated earlier than normal. There was a second one where there had been a few problems, uh, but actually by um, just changing the regime a bit they stabilised it and the remaining 18 uh, actually worked quite well. Uh, so I don't uh, underestimate the fact that there's a risk here that if we were to uh, go for an overnight uh, ban you could have problems as people struggle to get used uh, to the new management techniques and this is exactly the kind of thing that I'm sure the Beak Trimming Action Group will weigh up when they um, put forward their conclusions to me. I think the industry view is, is quite clear. We're waiting on the BTAG report, which is going. There's a, there's a final meeting of BTAG on the 10th of November, only the week after this. Uh, the minister has asked for a, um, a, a unified re response from the uh, from the committee. Uh, I feel at the moment, uh, with my practical head on, that we're just not ready yet to contemplate a beak trimming ban. And don't forget that this is all about animal welfare. And I just do not think we will be ready with the birds that we're using at the moment to uh, accept to have a ban in uh, 1st of January next year. If we did have one, I think it would be a, something of a disaster from an animal welfare point of view. Because from time to time we'd get issues like we had with some of the trial flocks that we've had in the Bristol study. Uh, and these are just unacceptable. Don't forget, we do this for positive animal welfare reasons. We don't, we don't do it just for fun. We're actually doing it to try and prevent a worse problem happening. That's not to say, however, However, that the issue, even if, even if there isn't a ban next year, it's not to say that the issue is going to go away, because it might be five years, it might be ten years, but it'll come back again. At some stage in the future, we, the industry, are going to have to learn how to deal with untrimmed birds. By then, when we do have to do it, I hope that genetically the bird has changed behaviourally so we can do it in an acceptable way. And it's important that we don't lose the uh, interventions that we've put in, such as the uh, um, in, in the Lion Code. You know, we've now now all producers have to um, adopt at least six of the interventions from Assurewell, from Bristol University, which have been shown to be positive. And of course, these things are positive for un, for trimmed birds as well as untrimmed birds. So I think there's a lot of good to come out of it. But I I fully believe that we are not ready for a ban uh, in the first of January next year.